Sophie Candy here and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines and here we are in the little waterfront residential district that we did last time out and I hope you guys enjoyed the trip with the piers and the low density green cities DLC residential it turned out pretty nice I think I was quite pleased with the end results here this little district has fast become one of my favourite in Oradon actually and it seem to have solved some of the flooding issues they're not complaining quite as much as I've lifted up this entire area just a few notches and that seems to have helped them and worked quite a bit but yeah I just absolutely love how these decks sit up against the piers with the boats and yeah it's really got that kind of Florida vibe and next episode I will give this area a name so please bear with if you have any other suggestions then do drop them down because I haven't quite decided yet there's been too many good suggestions so we'll see about that next time and of course we did have our resort hotel here as well with the massive swimming pool complex the little kiddies pool a couple of bars deck chairs that sort of thing we do have the odd person walking around here getting to these gazebos which is quite nice to see I think yeah, there goes another one straight through the hut. <laughs> they do actually walk through the doors, which I thought was quite a cute little effect. This metro station gets super busy sometimes, which is really quite nice to see. And lots of people using the trams as well. There's lots of hustle and bustle around this area, so I think it turned out all right. But for today, we are going to be turning our attention to something very, very different. And we are actually going to be zooming all the way over to this peninsula here. And we're going to be doing our main cargo and passenger dock area today so i am super excited to get onto this it feels like an absolute age since i've done industrial detailing which is absolutely my favorite thing to do in this game so i'm absolutely stoked to get onto this and hopefully you guys are going to enjoy it as well so the first thing that i want to do with this area is actually terraform away this little island right here because it's going to be in the way of our big ships which are some of them are going to line up on this side others here and we're also going to have a big fishing harbor in the back end here as well there's going to be lots going on in this port, but this island is properly in the way. So we are going to have to say bye bye to it and just completely eliminate it, which is probably going to cause some flooding somewhere in Oregon with all this shift in water right here. But we will deal with that. So we'll just level out that land and then we'll get our tree brush and scrub out all of these trees as well. We've got a nice big size here and that'll get rid of them nice and easily. So there we go we should have complete access to the shipping route so if i just show you where they come in so we have the main shipping route which runs all the way well actually there's two that run all the way through the waters of oradon obviously we've got solitude port over this side which already has a small harbor on it they'll be all connected up to that as well they'll be coming out this way and round these islands to get into this big port so we're gonna have lots of connections up this side and here as well completely free now that we've got rid of that island and then we'll have fishing as mentioned in the middle here so now just to prepare ourselves because one of the assets i definitely like to use is the cargo hub which also has rail attached to it as well so i really want to bring the cargo rail line all the way down here so that is going to be the first thing that i put in today so as you know a couple of episodes ago we built this massive train intersection here which separates all of our cargo from our intercity passenger lines from our internal passenger lines as well so i absolutely want to keep that consistent theme and at the moment the cargo line comes up into here up into this cargo station which is currently the only cargo station actually in oradon at the moment and then actually diverts back into the passenger line here so this is what we need to split off I'm just going to delete that section of rail here and what I'd like to do is bring out the cargo line just running absolutely parallel to this intercity train line along here and then we'll bring it down next to the canal underneath these roads coming out into the cargo hub round about there so the easiest way to do this is to grab our train track and we actually are going to use the no catenary train tracks for this and we're going to use network multi-tool with the parallel roads function and we're going to go right from this node I'm going to just keep going all the way down this track up to where that cargo station sits at the moment there's a few obstacles that we're going to have to avoid along the way but we'll do it right to there and then i am just going to use the equal sign just to give a tiny bit of separation between these two tracks so they're just not quite as close as they were before then we will hit enter to place that and yeah we do have tree anarchy on thank god so that should be absolutely fine in there now clearly this road is overhanging so we do just need to adjust this back a little bit which I will do right now and so yeah there we go so I have just brought that in just slightly the curve slightly tighter than it was before but cars are still going pretty smoothly around it and it's now not interrupting that train track there 
Now if we keep on coming up this way, I obviously want to keep on this same theme here. So we'll upgrade this section of track to a bridge. So just using the road tools here. And we'll make sure Anarchy is on because they're a little bit close. We'll just upgrade those segments so that should nicely mirror that other side. And actually, can I see that node that is slightly out of sync here? What we will do is just drag that back just ever so slightly to get that to line up nicely with those other sections. And is that another car driving along our rail? It is. <laughs> So if anyone hasn't seen the short that went out on my channel a few days ago, you will have seen that people are indeed using the rail as their own personal road now. Where is this guy going? Home building, occupation building and status building. He is quite confused. Yeah, I, I would say he is pretty confused. <laughs> and you know what? It turns out that I don't think even he knows where he's going. He's headed off the map this way. So we'll just leave him to it. So now here as well, we haven't got the cargo line going straight on. So at the moment, they'd have to go in and out of the cargo station and down here once we connect that up. So I do want to avoid that as well. I don't want all cargo trains having to go through the station, even if they're not stopping. So what we are going to do is just pull back the passenger line just a little bit to give enough room to put in an extra cargo line next to it. And so there we go. So we do have some rocks on the line here as well. So we're just going to have to move some of these back a little bit just to... Just to make sure they're not like completely over the train tracks and we don't have major accidents here. And we can come and tidy up some of this detailing in detailing time lapse a little bit later on. Okay, so now we can draw our attention to bringing the train line down alongside the canal here. So again, we're going to grab the same train track and I am just going to snap into the guidelines of the key down here and bring this literally all the way along just like that. And now I definitely do, we've got collision turned off, so we've got issues with trees in the tracks. But I definitely do want this to be the height of the canal here. I want it to be all nice and level. So it has sunk in a little bit just because of terrain issues here. So let's just make sure that these are all brought back up. So now what we want to do is try and get a reasonably smooth connection in here. So again, let's grab our train track and we can go to the raised segment now and we'll go to the freeform tool as well here. And we're just going to try and bring this down to breach the road guideline of this other train track, which may prove tricky because it's going to try and snap into some other ones, I think, there. So we could bring it up this way and then use move it to form it out nicely. I think what we may need to do is just bring a slightly further straight section like so. And then if we snap into the guidelines, we should get a slightly smoother curve there. And I am just going to shift this pillar over ever so slightly because that is on the railway track there. So that should give us a nice transition down the slope. We could actually even go a step further there. So let's use Network Multi-Tool this time. We can check the degree of the slope here. We'll use the slope function. and We'll go from this node to this node. Uh, hit enter. So 3.9, which I think is acceptable for a train. And there we go. We've got a nice smooth bend coming under the highway and running across here. We should get some nice little layers of transport height here with the rail running over and the road there as well. So that is going to set us up for going into our cargo harbour. So the next thing that I want to deal with is actually our road traffic. And because this is going to be a major industrial port, I am expecting a lot of traffic from here. So what I would ideally like is a direct link into the highway right here. And then what we will do as well is set up a, a nice collector arterial road to connect up over to the Skidmark junkyard up here because we're going to have a lot more industry over this side as well so we want decent connections between all of those areas. So now for this junction we are working with quite a tight space here at the moment so what I am going to do is actually pull this highway over so it is going to somewhat overlap this train track the cargo train track so that's going to kind of sit underneath this highway just for a very small stretch of it. So I'm just going to drag over these nodes for now very, very crudely. And then we're going to have to use move it to adjust these nicely. So if we hold alt here, we'll get some nice snapping on the go. Okay, so now that we have that in place, we've got a gap enough to put some slip roads down the middle here. I know we've got an electricity pylon in the middle of the road, which we will sort out. Do not worry. I'm going to come on to our main collector road that's going to take people from the highway straight into the port. So I'm going to use a four lane medium industry road for this and I'm going to bring it just straight out into the port like so. And then it is going to head straight back 
towards these junctions and what i'm actually going to do is go right under the highway here trying to we'll just stop here for a second and then what i'm going to do is just take off all the snapping apart from angle and we're going to try and situate it and we'll turn off snapping to nodes here as well right in the middle of these highways here so we've got the node nicely in the middle just like that and again we'll sort out the electricity pylons in just a second so what we'll do is grab our highway slip roads and we're going to bring out some very very crude connections for this so this is going to be a pretty basic intersection but it should hold the industrial traffic absolutely fine and not have any problems with that Okay, so there we go so we have got some nice smooth ramps going down these sides and i have also here as well just flicked these round 90 degrees so they are not on this train track now so this cargo train line is completely unobstructed as it goes down here actually slightly under the highway which i quite like that effect of yeah quite like how that's turned out okay so getting back to our port now one major feature that i do want to put in here and to make it feel a little bit more port like i think as well is we're definitely going to have a toll booth a large toll booth coming into this area as a bit of a security gate i don't think people would just be able to come aimlessly in and out of a port so we will use this as a bit of a check-in area and i am then just going to continue this road on straight down just like so for now and actually we do need to do a little bit of terraforming that has just reminded me here before we start to do anything so what i'm going to do is flatten out the terrain to this level this side and make it slightly lower along the edges so that when we put in our ports we get nice low to the water ports so that ships aren't kind of jumping up to the cranes or anything strange like that yeah, i think we're going to have to adjust it as we put in the assets going down this side but it will be nice to get a few different layers of height in around the port edges here so First things first, what I'd like to focus on is the main big port assets and their, and where they are going to sit. So from this road, what I want is no big assets sitting up against this road. We don't want any of the truck traffic kind of blocking traffic along this. This is going to be the main flow into the port and we will bring it around this way once I know the orientation of a big asset that is going to go down there. So for now, we will leave that like that, but we're going to have little entranceways coming off of it to get down into the main harbour areas. So to start off with, the big asset really that I want in down here is the cargo hub. So we're just going to place that in for a moment and we can use move it to align this nicely. So I think we will plop that in round about here. 
and yeah let's just use move it to align that up now what i want is this train track flowing straight into it so we're going to have to pull it out just a touch and then line up our train track so let's grab that and we can change it to raise just for now until we get it in nicely we'll just bring that across like that and then we can use this to try and line it up just by eye for the moment to get a nice smooth connection and a nice straight connection there that's slightly raised up from the edge of the canal but again i think that that is absolutely fine like that now what i do want to do here is just bring out this land a little bit further uh, because what we will do as well is get uh, just normal keys. So these are not going to be war crawl keys. This is kind of an industrial feeling area. So I want it to appear like that. We'll just draw in a segment of key like that. And again, make sure that it is the same height as our cargo harbour there, which I think that is, will do absolutely fine. But yeah, I think that that will do nicely. But what I do want to do with this key is really try and line it up to the edge of this harbour to make sure that it looks like it is flowing correctly so it can come right underneath this train track here we'll just pull it back just that little bit more so it's sort of buried almost underneath that train track yeah just like that gives us a really nice edge to this area and a tiny bit of terraforming needed here just to smooth this out so let's just pull that back with level terrain and that will help there now we have got sand texture here as well so i would like to actually just get rid of that so we've just got the normal grass there we'll probably be using some surface painters to make this quite an industrial area there anyway but for now that'll work well and i think i will actually leave this segment of rail as a raised track because we get this really nice fence along the edge of the quay here if we just had it on the ground we'd lose that fencing and i think that's quite an important feature coming up to the edge of the harbour here so all in all quite happy with how that has gone in and we are just going to leave this as an in and out connection. We're not going to join it on any further this way. OK, so from here, what we are going to do is we're going to force this road to the ground. And what we'll do is just bring it out. I think, in fact, actually, we'll just bring it straight up by four units like that and then bring it across like so. Now, we do want these to all be the same height, which is playing up on the terrain at the moment. I think we'll trim that back just a tiny bit and then what we want in here is two of these slightly smaller harbors so we'll just grab a little bit of industrial road just to put us a bit of a buffer between there so we can get these lined up nicely and then we should be able to snap this in at a nice 90 degree angle and yeah that has gone in absolutely perfectly by luck right up against that other one which is what we want we want this consistent key side line that's the kind of effect that we want to go for so then in this area as well, between them, what we can start to do is introduce more keys just to join this area up. So we'll just snap it into the edge of that. And what I will do is go to freeform, use a slight bend and bend it round into the side of this key here. Now, of course, let's all make sure that these nodes are the same height as these harbours. So we can just highlight the nodes like that. Control H with move it and then we should be able to raise those up although that doesn't seem to have worked so there we go we start to get this consistent key line and what we can do here is just adjust this so that it really lines up perfectly with the edge of that harbour and of course with this area in between what we'll do is just level out this ground here so that everything's nice and flat and consistent then we can do some lovely detailing probably containers and various different industrial detailing in that space in between the harbours so what we then get from that is this nice kind of curved effect here. So we've got a slightly different depth to the cargo hub versus these two cargo harbours here. Now then following this on around the corner, what I'd like to do is introduce some passenger harbours here. So for now, I'm just going to use this as a road guideline. I'm going to bring that out at a 90 degree angle, bring a road down right to the edge of the water here and then across. Probably slightly closer, actually, probably about there will do absolutely fine for that. But that ensures that this road is absolutely parallel to this one. And we're going to delete these in a second. They're really rough and crude for now. But what we'll do is we'll grab our harbour here and we'll line it up to this road. And in fact, we are actually going to have two harbours in here as well. So we'll put both of those in and we'll sort out the roads again in just a second. And then we'll do a similar thing this end. Just bring out a small road like that. Grab another cargo harbour and in fact yeah we will need to do just a little bit of terraforming 
and then we can drop in another cargo harbour here. So this is going to be a pretty busy port, if you can't tell already. There we go. So they should be all lined up and symmetrical. And in fact, let's for now just clear out all of the trees from this entire area because we won't be wanting them. We may put in a few trees in various little places just to keep that Oridan vibe flowing down into the harbour area. But realistically, we don't really want any of those for now. So then let's go ahead and delete the road segments which lie underneath these harbours here. So now that we have those in, we'll go ahead and delete these road guidelines for now. Uh, we will be putting in, obviously, roads down to there. But what we can do from here is now bring in a really nice sweeping curve. And we want to make sure that we are forcing to ground for this. So let's just bring out a very small seven unit piece of road like that. And if we go back to our curve function, what we should find is we get a very even bend. Yeah, 21 by 21 units, exactly like that is what we wanted. So now on this corner, what we want to do is continue the flow of keys along. So if we go back into our key tool, and again, just using the bog standard ones, we can then use network multi-tool with the parallel road function. And we can put in a parallel key to this bit here. Now, clearly, we want to extend this out. We want it to line up with the edges of the harbour. But hopefully, it should do this pretty nicely for us if we put in all our roads and our harbours correctly. Let's just pull those out just a little bit. And there we go. It's actually lining up with the edges of both of these harbours, I think. We might just have to draw them in a tiny bit at the end. We can click enter there, and then we get our really nice curved key wall on that end. And again, we'll just need to come into the terrain function and level this all out here. Now, what I would like to do is actually mirror this corner on the top as well. So again, we're going to use parallel road function. We're going to go in and get our four lane industrial road there. And then we'll go back to network multi-tool with the parallel road function again. Select this corner of the road and then add this one in as well. So quite importantly here, what we really want to do is try and make sure that this is lined up with this road. And that everything's nice and smooth, which I think is about there. This might be a little bit of trial and error. So let's just grab that and bring this in. And that is 180 degree angle. It's very, very slightly off, but we can get away with that. Quite happy that that is okay. And then what we'll do is continue this road on down this way. Now at this end of the harbour, there is a rather large factory that I would like to put in, and it is the petroleum refinery. And all it takes is petroleum, plastic and metals, which comes from oil and ore industry, which is all stuff that we already have. So let's just place it in like that. And we're going to use Move It, holding Alt as well to flip it around so that it's perfectly perpendicular to the rest of it. And then what we're going to do is just drag this out so it's right on the edge of this harbour here. So I want this harbour to almost go into it. Now we're going to have to just check heights and terrain here. So let's make sure that this is the same height as the harbour there. And looking at it now, we are actually going to have to just leave a little bit of room for that terraforming of the terrain. So I'm going to just pull that back ever so slightly so that terrain isn't sticking out that side. And then over here, we will do a little bit of terraforming just to smooth this out right up close against the oil refinery like this, both sides. So now what we can do is continue the key wall on all the way around. And so there we go. And I have also added in the shipyard just on this corner here and extended the keys around this side too. Now, the next thing that I want to do is just have a little look at putting in a breakwater around the fishing area. So what we want to do is bring this out in a diagonal kind of pattern. And we want to try and line it up to the edge of this shipyard here, roughly at least. So I'll bring it out just about like that and then bring a small bit across like so. And then down in next to this shipyard as well, I'm going to do something relatively similar. So let's turn off snapping to nose here so we can go a little bit freeform. And we're going to come out. In fact, we'll need to turn off all snapping to guidelines here. We're going to just come out like this and then across like so. So what that does is give us a very defined entrance into our fishing harbour area there. And that should line off nicely against the shipping area. Now there's a bit of detailing obviously to be done with all of this. And we will come to that in the detailing time lapse. So that gives us a really nice breakwater effect. And I am actually going to leave in the gravel road there. I'm contemplating whether to change it to a dirt road. I think that might actually be nicer. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we can put in lots of natural rock detailing, same as our other harbour walls that we've got around 
Oridan in a couple of different places just to finish that off. That gives us a nice entrance into our fishing harbour here, which is of course flooding now that we've done all of that landscaping in the water. That kind of gives us our overall shape of our harbour, which hopefully is pretty interesting there. So let's just bring in some power and then we can hook some rows into this. So I am just very, very crudely for now going to grab this power line here. And we're just going to bring this across and feed this in to the toll booth like so. And then we'll bring this down and feed this into the harbour this side. Let's just check and see where electricity is jumping. Yes, yeah, so we're going to need a few different electricity connections here. So again, let's just be crude for now just to get that all in and going. Let's also then have a little look at the internal road network for this side of the harbour. So we are going to grab our industrial roads and I'm going to go actually for one way roads here because I think that will be the most efficient thing traffic wise for this. So let's bring out a road about in the middle of this harbour area. And of course, we want to turn all snapping on for this so we get a really nice angle. We will bring it out to the same distance as that and then we're going to bring it round and down like this so that it flows nicely into this harbour. But let's give them an alternative option of going this way if they want to get to these cargo harbours or even round into the passenger port there. Now we can use Network Multi-Tool as well to unlock these segments and then that way we can also upgrade these into the one-way industrial road so that everything looks consistent and flows really nicely there. Let's upgrade that. So they're going round in a big circles. So what we're doing here is just funneling traffic in the direction that we really want it. And then what we want to do here, of course, is continue this one-way system on. So we'll do that. We'll also use Network Multi-Tool to unlock these segments as well. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and do all of those too. And the ship harbour. And then we can start to upgrade into our one-way system. So we're going to have a few ins and outs like this. And also a road running down here for the fishing harbours and connecting obviously up to our petroleum refinery and the such like as well. So what I will do now is go ahead and lay out that road network and be right back. So there we go so we have now got lots of trucks and stuff flowing around the system and it all seems to be working okay so we've got an in here which will send people around for this cargo hub here this is actually two ways so that people can either get out from the cargo hub or come in to these two cargo hubs and then an out there in for the passenger terminal and then out round here back into this roundabout and then we've set up a bit of a road network and added in some fishing harbors here as well and I've actually just manually adjusted the keys as you would have seen in the time lapse there just to bring them out in line with some of these harbour walls here. Which I think makes a bit more sense and then gives us an opportunity for a bit more detail in, in these spaces in between the key walls and the road here. We just adjusted that there and put in a basic road network frame around here for now too until we get in our other assets and there might be a few adjustments with that. But that really is the overall shape of how our harbour is going to look. 
But next, what I would like to also introduce to it, because we have got these passenger terminals here, I really don't want these passengers getting out and either waiting for taxis or getting in cars, which is probably what they're doing at the moment. We, so we need to provide them with some public transport. Now we have this train line here, so that is what I would like to bring in now. So I am just going to literally bring it underneath this road because we definitely don't want a level crossing on this road. I'm expecting the traffic to be pretty busy here. So we'll bring it underneath it and run it all the way along and down this side here and over into a train station this side. Now I'm thinking because it will be raised and this road is actually lower now, which works out perfectly for us, is that I'm going to use one of the content creator pack train stations and I'm going to just use this one. We don't need more than one line, so I think that this will work absolutely fine for this area. So we will just drop it in. I think we'll, we'll have it so that it's right in the centre in between the two terminals there. So we've got these nice zebra crossings that side. And we'll add some more crossings in there because I know that they can walk across that side too. And that should give us a nice start for our rail network. So just grabbing our rail lines, what we will do is we will put them flat to the ground alongside this road. So I'm going to just snap it into the road guidelines for now, up in the part where that road is flat and that is doing something so bizarre with the terrain. So let's try that again. Just hit home to make sure that it's at terrain height. And then we'll bring out a nice flat parallel road like that. And then what we'll do is we will raise the train line, keep continue to bring it out straight here and hopefully it will raise enough raise up enough to get over this road that is what i'm hoping for anyway like so and that is actually probably just enough clearance there i think although there's a massive dip down to that station so what we can definitely do here is raise this node right up so we're getting it nice and level and flat going into that station that's really what we want and that'll give us a bit of extra height over the collector road there that feels about right so let's just raise these ones up to the same height and then what we can do is bring it down in a nice gentle slope back to the ground here that's a very smooth gradient coming up and round and into the train station there and hopefully we should start to get a lot of people using us so let's just hook up the rest of this train line and then we can get passengers starting to move in and out of there now I am going to risk it and do a little level crossing really close to this junction here. We may need to do a bit of no controller to split this out into one junction here. Although I'm hoping that this train line won't be too busy because we're going to ban international trains from this. So well, it won't be connected to the intercity line. So they won't have an opportunity to come through there. So it should just be internal trains. But we'll run this all the way up alongside this road to about here. And then what we want to do this side is start to drop this underneath. So now we have got an absolutely massive influx of traffic trying to get down to these passenger terminals here. So let's get this train line hooked in and see if we can't fix it. So we'll just go from that train station straight into our main central hub here where we've got this line already sorted. And it is not connected to Intercity, so we do not need to worry about that. We'll just put that in like so and actually i do want to have a look at the train capacities here and which trains we're using we don't want to be just using the regular vanilla one i think we're going to use the commuter train for this which has a higher capacity i think it's a 400 rather than 240 per train so i think that's a little bit better um because i suspect that there is going to be an awful lot of people in this area and now the other thing that i would like to bring in is metro just to give them a few options here so I think we will just go for the bog standard vanilla metro station here. So I'm just going to plop that in there. And actually, if we just get rid of the whiteness, what I will do is move this right up so it's on the corner of the train station there. And then let's grab our metro lines, make sure we're not forcing to ground. And let's bring in a connection down to our main metro hub. So we are just going to connect it up to the hospital line here and then we can grab this line we'll just grab this end stop move it all the way down to the cruise heart terminal and then we can add back in our stops at our hospital there we go so now they've got the option of either train or metro to take them where they want to and we'll see which one they prefer over time now I will just mention like to put in another crossing there just to get people across that station so we'll go ahead and do that 
I would also like to give them options of taxis here as well. And we will absolutely definitely put in a few actually taxi depots down here. I think a harbour area is probably a good space for that. But let's just put in a little taxi rank there. Just to add that in in between those harbours. Now what I would also like to do, because this car park is really filling up, is add in some more car parking. So if we just grab Bob here and on this one, what I do want to do is these use. I'm going to get rid of them because they're quite in the way. But then we are going to use Network Multi-Tool to unlock these segments here so that we can add in some additional car parking to them. So by doing that, that allows us to grab our parking lot roads and make a connection into some of these nodes. So like there, for example, we can bring that out. That's looking a little bit dodgy. So I think what we will do before we do that is actually delete out these sections that we just unlocked and we'll add them in again using the parking lot road functions. And again, let's just unlock these segments as well. And that should help us to form this connection. Now, the other thing that I do want to have a little look at doing with parking as well is bringing in some parking around this curved corner here. So I think this would look pretty nice. And what we could actually do is use the parallel road tool again for this. So let's just bring that out into the center of this area. We'll hit enter there. And we get this really nice curved car park effect. And what we can do here as well is just continue this on a little bit either end. So this bit will be straight here. And that has not come in quite right. So let's just adjust that with a little bit of move it. And then what I will do is exactly the same thing actually on the other side. So like that. And then let's give ourselves some ways in and ways out. So we will just draw in can find the nodes here yeah we'll draw in a small entrance either side there and then again up this end as well and that should give us absolutely plenty of parking for our cruise terminal there okay so the final couple of big assets i do want to put in there is one big large factory that i haven't put in that i would like to put in here which is the modular house factory now it needs plain timber, plastic, glass and metals, but we do have plastic, glass and metals already in Oradon, but we do not have plain timber as of yet. So I'm going to have to turn this building off while we wait for those, but I think that will be okay. So I'm just going to place it in here because the orientation of it, I really like the run up on the side of this building. We can get some more fencing in here, but I think with the trees, with the railway next to it and this road gradually sloping down, these little tanks, I think it's a really nice asset to fit into this area. So we are just going to drag this road over just a little bit. Let's make sure we've got snapping on there with move it. And then I am going to continue it on up because I think this asset screens out for it up this side here where we've got some little entrances there up into this big storage yard. And just to give this a nice rounded effect to the end, I'm just going to put on a piece of concrete road so that it goes out there. And then we'll use no controller as well to turn off that crossing, which doesn't make a huge amount of sense in the middle of a massive factory. Now, of course, for all of these factories and these different buildings, we are going to need storage as well. So let's turn that off while we don't have plain timber. And then as soon as we've got in Oridan's forestry area, we can get that back in. So we do want a lot of warehouses. Now, down here, what I would like to do is put in a few medium warehouses. Now, these don't appear to fit into this space. However, with a little bit of anarchy and a few different mods, I think we can make this work really nicely. Because what we can do here is we've got a bit of room to play with up front. So let's just grab both of these and move them up to the road. Let's turn snapping off. Move those up to the road ever so slightly. And what we then get there on this industrial road is this really nice effect of these warehouses right up against it. I'm just going to shift this one over again, just so it merges into the side of that. And we'll just pull that out just a little bit more so that we've got that pavement clear there but then it gives us this really nice roof effect up against this main collector here and everything seems to work out the front down the sides it looks generally okay could shift this one in just a little bit more to make them fully merge just like that and then next to it what i will use is actually a couple of the warehouse assets from avania so we'll just put in a few of those and then again, these work so nicely, pushing them into the terrain. So we're going to push them right up to the edge like that. 
And then again, you can see the effect that it creates up against this main arterial there. And it's a little bit dodgy on the terrain in between those, but I think we can work with that. It does just mean that this view in on this arterial starts to become really nice with those big cranes behind these warehouse roofs all kind of flat up against this road. We've got the rail on this side, big factories. And then the other thing that I would quite like to add into this space is a large warehouse. Now, I'm not 100% sure that this is going to fit, so we may have to do a little bit of finagling here. But if we put it right up against the back of the modular house factory, yeah, we're just a tiny bit too close here. What I'm going to do is just grab these nodes and the modular house factory and just drag this up just a tiny bit. And we can put this fairly close to the edge of the road here. And then we've just got a little bit more space to work with with our large warehouse. Because then again, you see we've got the effect of these roofs here. This warehouse will continue on that fencing with the train line as well. It starts to all feel very industrial coming down into this area. Of course, we need a road connection up to this one. So let's go back in and grab our industrial road. We'll just create a crossroads turning up here and bring that in like that. And then from there, what I will do again is use the concrete road just to line up the front of this building. So we'll just bring that out either side, which creates a nice connection there. And again, let's use no controller and hide those crosswalk markings because I don't like them necessarily in that location. And in fact, I think we will just bring out a very small one that way so that it looks like people can get into the facility there. Now, of course, we need to set these all up with different goods. So I think for these ones, we will just keep them on commercial zone goods for these two medium warehouses here. And then here I'd like to do a little bit of a mix. I think we'll have some unique factory products in there. We also need to create a road connection for these because I'm saying they're not connected. And then we will go for some of the zoned industry products in each of these. So we'll have farming in or forestry in that one. We'll then have farming here. We'll then have ore here. And finally oil here. Now the reason for that is that we don't actually have any uh farming zoned industry in as yet but generic industry does actually need it so it's quite helpful for us if we can get that in and get that imported and store them here because it'll be useful for our generic industry and ultimately help us with traffic in the long run now over in this one i think we will just go for more commercial zones goods ultimately that is mainly what we need here and then we do just need to have a look at the modular house factory and make sure that we've got warehouses set up for everything that that one needs, along with the petroleum refinery and the shipping yard down there too. And of course, the fishing harbours are also now complaining that they are full of fish and have nowhere to take them. So the other thing we absolutely do want to put in here is a load of fish factories. Now with the fish factories, I'm actually going to put these around in opposite directions because what we can do is bob off this fence in the middle here so that we can combine these two assets so what i am going to do is go in here we're going to find the industrial fencing and yeah we are going to remove the sections of fencing which run up the inside we can keep the ones on the outside for now but yeah there we go we just removed those is there one more there we go and i think i will keep the internal ones i don't mind them too much we can create some little areas out of those but then what it means is that we can go and find it we can find our industrial fence and we can add it back in using prop line tool. So I am going to just put in a little bit continuing on this pattern here. And again, this just helps to make this look like this is one complex as opposed to being two assets put together. So we've got rid of that fence in the middle and now we're creating little areas and we'll use linear fence fill here so that it yeah looks consistent and looks natural we'll just bring that one down there as well and then we've got this nice big area we can do some more prop detailing within this and hopefully yeah that starts to look a little bit more like one consistent building without that fence down the middle now as well in here we can also start to introduce some of the industry storage so certainly some oil tanks i think would look pretty good here so i'm actually just going to plop some in there and then if we also think about ore, the one of my favourite storage assets actually is this red barn here. So we will place that in, I think, there. Because then again, from this road, that red roof with the cranes behind it and the fencing there, we can put some more detailing in. 
is really going to look quite nice, I feel, there. Then I think in here what we'll go for is a bit of prop detailing around some warehouse yards and that sort of thing. Lots and lots of detailing within these spaces and prop detailing again down here. Now, of course, we also want the warehouses down this side. So let's just grab our concrete road segment here and we'll bring that out. Now, in terms of the shipyard, it needs plastics, glass, metals and plain timbers. This needs plastics, metals and petroleums. So we're going to need five different warehouses in this area. So let's just bring out this road again like that. And what we can do, I do have another asset off the workshop in terms of the warehouses, which I would quite like to use here, which is this one, which again looks quite nice when we merge it all in together. So I'm just going to put three in a row. Actually, it's done it for me there. And then we will also put in another two down this side. And in fact, I think because we actually need two lots of glass and metals, is it? Plastic and metals. I'm actually going to put in an extra two. So that we've got two for the plastic and metals for each of those. So again, let's just get those in and then we can use move it just to align that really nicely with those other buildings there. Now we've got more of an effect of these long warehouses and I'll just shift those out and we can put in some really nice warehouse detailing behind this to make this look like one big warehouse yard there. But let's go ahead and assign them. So I think in general, that is all of the main assets in here. So it really is now about detailing this all up. So I will go ahead and do that in a time lapse and be right back.
So there you have it. And that is an awful lot of props that has gone into this port area. Like, honestly, I'm starting to wonder if it's more props in this area than there is in the whole of the rest of Oridan put together. But we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. And there would have been an awful lot of detailing that you didn't see because this literally took me hours and I could not cram it all into a six or seven minute time lapse for you. So I'll try and go through it all. So to start off with, we have got our rail yard cargo area here, and I've just used one of the oil storage areas just to put some of those trains inside, which I thought gave quite a nice little effect, a little sheltered area for those cargo trains. Obviously surrounded by lots of containers, which is a big theme throughout this port. And a little bit of a scrap metal and waste piles here, because when I was looking around Google Earth at ports, actually the one port that I really kind of focused on for this build, which was Southampton Port in the UK, had a lot of these kind of scrap metal piles and that sort of thing hanging around the port area. So that's what I've put in there. I have also got this brand new car storage area as well, all really tightly packed in there. Little keeper's hut there, making sure that no one's stealing the brand new cars. And then of course we go on to lots and lots of container storage action going on here. We've put in lots of cranes and the such like as well, just to again, give that kind of skyline of that industrial port feel and you're gonna have to excuse the absolute chaos that is happening in the waters out here i may have to turn off some of my ports because this is not ideal <laughs> it's not ideal at all yeah tons and tons of containers and these cranes i think really help to add something to the skyline the red cranes on the cargo hubs and the cargo port there really yeah looks looks nice but i think those yellow cranes add something to it We've got a little bit of truck detailing here, lots of decals as well to scuff up the roads as we go around, and also an awful lot of these rocks as well to cover up this banking. We have, of course, fenced in the railway track as we go along there, and I'm absolutely just loving watching these trains go down this road next to all these cars, the warehouses, either side. I think it just looks awesome. And you can kind of, when you do a first person as well, you can peek over and see the cranes, the ports in the background. I'm really liking how it's come together. And I only did a small amount of detailing around the car park here, just a little bit of fencing to frame it off. Some trees in the block here, but actually no one is using this car park because the public transport links are pretty good from here. So we've got quite a few people using the train, but the metro is absolutely rammed. You can just see this flood of people coming down to both of these cargo harbours, in and out. It's uh, pretty, pretty mad there. A little bit of hedge detailing here, a little toilet block some benches that sort of thing just to detail up those car parks and then we come on to a bit more storage some lorries putting the lorry truck heads here actually as well and again more containers and then much of the same round here so we have put in two taxi depots just to frame off this kind of storage yard area a few little trucks here with some of the truck heads in again and very much the same over this side as well two more medium warehouses here and a load of containers I did a tiny spot of commercial here. I figured next to a cruise port, they'd probably have a garage and maybe a car rental place. I'm kind of like making this 
green cities commercial asset looked like a car rental place it look, probably looks more like a car sales place but that's what we're going for there a couple of other smaller commercial buildings again and one thing that you wouldn't have seen in the time lapse is i copied some of the cars from skidmark junkyard just to create this little scrap car yard here a few more containers uh, but i thought that framed off this yard pretty nicely actually and again like when i've been looking around at ports there's lots of scrap cars and that sort of thing around those areas very small little boat yard here as we come on and then we did put, a, put in the old factory actually here a little bit more of a rundown area in the port some slightly older looking generic industry buildings there and a few little prop details dotted around i've got a little service area in here with all three necessary services although we don't have death care actually in the port so hope no one dies and then we come on to more container detailing actually a couple of rubbish dumps here and then some garbage services around here as well just so that we've kind of got that in this main industrial area servicing all of these buildings here but all of the traffic seems to be flowing around quite nicely nothing's building up and yeah I, th I think it's sort of come together reasonably well i have just dotted in trees along the edge here just to frame off the edge but we will be building up around it i can't imagine that this will be green around this industrial port but we just need to build up around it to know what is going to go there but for now i think it's uh yeah i think it's come out all right we just need to sort out the ship traffic <laughs> it's absolute chaos in the waters of Oradon. it really is now just before we go i do actually want to give this port a name so i'm going to paint a district over the whole thing and we are going to give this a name of someone who has been a really really strong supporter and super chatted incredibly generously and i did say that i would find another doc to name after her but this is going to be ducky docs after sarah ducky thank you so much for your support i like really really insanely appreciate it and you are incredibly generous so just thank you so much for your support and i hope you enjoy your bigger ducky ducks in oradon but that is going to be it for today so thank you so much for tuning in and if you have enjoyed the episode a like below is really appreciated and drop me a comment let me know what you'd like to see sitting up next to ducky ducks or any other ideas for future builds within oradon as well are always really appreciated and stay tuned for the cinematics but that is all from me for now so thank you for tuning in and i'll catch you next time bye bye